Hey everybody, today I want to talk about substitution mechanisms from an organic chemistry perspective and specifically I want to talk about SN2 and SN1 substitution mechanisms and later in these videos I'm going to go through and talk about these same mechanisms from an inorganic chemistry perspective. So to start out let's talk about SN2 and SN2 stands for substitution nucleophilic bimolecular. The bimolecular comes from there being two species in the rate determining step Although you might remember, if you've had this in class, there is only one transition state in SN2. So this is kind of what our reaction coordinates look like as it progresses. There's your starting materials, and there's your ending materials, and there's your transition state. And of course this is coordinate of reaction. And this is energy. Okay, and some attributes of SN2 are they're pretty fast. Your configuration inverts, so R becomes S, or S becomes R, because they have this thing called a backside attack, it's often referred to, so you just get an inversion that goes on. And bulky groups inhibit this reaction. So if you've got some kind of a methyl iodide, those, those hydrogens won't really inhibit it. But if you had tritert butyl methyl iodide, something like that, those T-butyl groups will really inhibit. And that reaction probably won't happen at all. Because for that backside attack to occur, there has to be some kind of a space opening. So let's go ahead and do a typical SN2 example. Let's take, for example, methyl iodide. and react it with a base and we are going to get something like methanol plus sodium iodide okay so we have a hydrogen in the back Hydrogen in the front, one in the plane, and here's our iodide in the plane. And what's going to happen is that OH with a negative charge on it is going to come push in here, kick that off, and then you have a really quick inversion. there you've got your charge conserved on that iodine and the rate for something like this is going to be really simple you just got your reaction rate forward times the concentration of your methyl iodide times the concentration of your nucleophile and that gives you the rate of reaction. So there's one, there's two, each of these are to the first power, and you overall have a second order reaction. Because you have two species involved, and they're each involved equally. So they only count for one each, so it's bimolecular. And that's where the whole SN2 comes from. Now let's go ahead and talk about SN1. SN1 stands for substitution nucleophilic unimolecular because there's only one species involved in the rate determining step. And what SN1 is, is in many ways the opposite of SN2. So in this one you have two transition states. Um, you can do it with bulky groups.
it racematizes So if you started with 100% R, you would get 50% R, 50% S. And you have an intermediate that is formed. So the graph of the reaction coordinate will look something like this. It's got two transition states and one intermediate state of lower energy. And this intermediate is a carbocation intermediate. Okay, so let's run through an example. And this is going to be a pretty typical example. We are going to have a central atom with three methyl groups on it and a halogen. And we are going to react it with, um, let's do methanol. and it's going to be heat. And the way this works is that's our methyl group, that ME. Is this group just leaves, it just spontaneously pops off and leaves us with this carbocation. We've got a positive charge on here and I've got a negative charge on here. And what happens is it's going to attract our nucleophile right here. So we've got free electron pairs in this oxygen. And we're going to have that jump onto here. Remember that's got a positive charge. So there's actually work involved in this mechanism, <laughs> unlike SN2, which is pretty instant. And then our positive charge is still conserved. And we have this. Now you probably know what's going to happen next that bromine is going to come and pick that hydrogen up and we're going to end up with our two products plus HBr so overall the rate equation for this is just dependent on our starting material. So you can see here it's unimolecular and overall first order 